Hey, welcome back. Let me ask you a question. Are you leading a guided life? As we move along our path, we discover at some stage that there is something greater than we are. Whether we call it the I am presence, whether we call it source or God or the creator or the creator energy or the universe. At some stage, we realize there is something greater and we also realize we are part of that greater. We're not separate from it. We're actually one with it. It is what lives through us. And as soon as we get to this realization that it's not us actually living our lives, that there is something within us that is living it through us, experiencing our lives through us, we get, to a, we get to a sense of our ego construction, what we have believed before to be us, as in our name, our story, our beliefs, our jobs, our skills, our fears, our talents, our thoughts, our emotions, our body even. And we realize that this is only one, one part of us that we're actually greater and that we're also <clears throat> connected to a greater and vaster intelligence than the one that we have up here. And I know many people who are very proud of the way their mind works, who, are, who, who focus very much on the powers of the mind and what the mind can do, what your brain is able to do, how you're able to assess things and analyze things and construct things even. And yeah, they, that may all be true, but they are totally identified with their mind. And that's who they think they are. Now, once you move into the realization that you're so much more than this, you're a mind-body-spirit complex, this is all one, and this is, this is connected to the life force energy that is flowing through us, then we also realize that we're connected to the higher intelligence, to the greater intelligence. And we also get a sense of this little life that we live, if we live it solely from our perspective of this is me, like ego me, personality me, I identified me and I need to make it all happen or not and I need to control as much as I can so that I can live what I want to live or avoid what I want to avoid, then we realize that there is a path out of suffering. There is a path out of not having control or a path of feeling powerless. And the paradox in that is that you, it may feel like when I ask you to look at surrendering to the higher guidance, right? To allow yourself to be guided by higher wisdom, or by inner wisdom, true wisdom, true love, true higher perspective, your spirit guides, source, um, angels, your higher self, wherever you see the source of guidance coming from, right? Or just generally higher wisdom, higher guidance, then you you get the sense that it is it is possible to receive that higher guidance and to to surrender to this and allow yourself to be guided by it so in the surrendering there could be perceived like apparently perceived there could be a um, giving up of power and um, that could be perceived in that but that only seems this way because the power we think we have when we act from the ego, from the personality, is an illusion anyway. We never have any power or any control, let's say, over life. Right? We don't. Things can happen like that. We think we can control. We can control circumstances. We can control other people. And yes, most people try to control as much as they can as many people as they can, as many circumstances as they can, and, and cause suffering for themselves, actually, really, while they do it. 
Because when they can't control someone, someone's behavior, someone's way of thinking, when they can't control whether they get a certain job or not, when they can't control what's happening in their life or not, or when people just die in their life, like pass away or, or leave them, or these are things they can't control. And then they feel out of control and powerless and suffer. Whereas if you move into the state of oneness with the higher guidance, if you realize there's always a higher wisdom that you as the person have no access to, like your ego cannot access that, but you as you, as the soul self, you absolutely can because you are that. And for argument's sake, for the picture, we can say you are connected to it, you have access to it, you can tap into it if you want to. So that way you surrender then, not not in the frame of mind, and this is very important for you to hear now. The ego would, would like to have control over life. Whereas if you move your state of being from ego consciousness to greater consciousness, greater awareness, let's say soul consciousness, to use a, a term, a word, then your desire is no longer to control life because you know life has so much, <laughs> so many better plans for you and so much more, re, um, how would I say this, a, a greater perspective on everything, aspects that you cannot see from your little ego mind and also unlimited resources to actually provide you with everything you need and everything you want and desire and want to live. So by shifting from ego consciousness to soul consciousness, and then not trying to control life anymore, but actually allowing life to enrich and inform and orchestrate your experiences. Now we're talking. This shift in, let's say for now, concepts, but this shift in consciousness, this shift in awareness state will make like it will change your life. So if up until now you have led a not guided life and have tried to make everything happen and try to solve every problem yourself and, and do everything yourself, right? Maybe from the best of your intentions. But that's stress and that's, oh, it's so much weight on our shoulders and it doesn't work anyway. Because in the end, there will always be situations in life where we will realize we have no control. And that can be devastating then to the ego-minded person, to the ego-consciousness human. Whereas once you have allowed, now I'm just going to speak from the frame of mind of the soul-based human. Once you have allowed life guidance, higher guidance, to actually dictate or influence or guide your life, then there is no struggle anymore. There is no perception anymore of the evil world out there or people or circumstances and me here and I need to protect myself. I need to make sure they do this and this and this that way and not that way because that will not make me happy and that's not what I approve of. The whole judgment aspect will go away, which will bring you closer and closer into non-duality, into non-judgment, into non-resistance. Because once you accept and allow for life or for the divine, if you want to call it that, it's the same, to flow through you in this incarnation, to live through you, to be expressed through you. And your intention is only to say, express yourself through me in the highest way possible. And I allow myself to be a vessel for this, to be a conduit for this. I allow life to express itself through me the way it wants to express itself through me. And life is always expansive, always benevolent. It always wants the best for you because you're part of its creation. You are it. So it's never, ever, ever against you. It can't be because it is you once you realize that. 
And that way, number one, you let go of the weight on your shoulders that you have to control everything and you have to make everything happen. And your life all of a sudden gets a type of depth and meaning and purpose which you may never have discovered if you had stayed in ego consciousness. And I invite you to look at this, what, what we've just talked about. I, allow, I, I invite you to allow this to sink into your heart space from your mind, from your brain. That's fine. Process it. But allow it to sink in if this resonates with you, of course. And see what happens, what changes as we speak about this. Because a guided life can never be wrong. And no matter what happens then in life, you will always have the perspective of, I'm here to be lived through by life, by God, by source, by the universe. I'm here to express the universe to its fullest in this vehicle, in this incarnation. And that's my intention. And I, because I know that the universe, the, the source of everything, is love and joy and peace and limitless abundance, that's me in my true state. So I allow this to flow through my life. I allow this to flow through my inner world, into the outer world, into my expression in this life. So then you don't have to try and manifest from the ego points of view, which is usually lack and fear. And I want to have this and that and the other because I'm lacking it and I need it and I want it and others have it and so do I. I want this, uh, so I want to create this for me. That's no longer an issue because, you know, you have access to all the, the limitless expressions of life, resources, um, in whatever area of your life, whether it's joy, whether it's finances, whether it's love, whether it's success, whether it's whatever it is you feel called to express in this life, a guided life is lived completely differently than an ego-based, mind-based life. And so by allowing life to express through you and taking the guidance from life, taking the guidance from source, from the divine, the ego dissolves because you are surrendering to the higher will. Father, thy will be done. Not mine, not my ego will, but Thy will be done. And God's will is always what is best for you, what's the highest. Always. And yes, there can be challenges and there can be dramas and there can be traumas. Absolutely. There can be. Doesn't have to be because the place where earth is now, where we are now in our development, in my perception, and I've said this before, Suffering is no longer necessary as a means to evolve and to grow. But nevertheless, contrast and experiences of, of uh, different natures, like positive, negative, as, as we would term it, right? Painful and joyful, they will still be present. But a guided life, a human who is living a guided life will know all of this is part of my guidance. Because how does guidance happen? It, it's not just an input of thought or, or a channeled inspiration or a voice that you follow. The guidance happens mainly, actually, through your life experiences, through what is presenting itself internally and externally. That's the guidance. That is the guidance. And often people look away from that. They want to channel and they want psychic experiences and contact with um, whoever up there to guide them. And that's fine too. But they're not willing to look at the guidance that's already being given to them on a daily basis. The experiences they have, the people they meet, the challenges they experience, that is our guidance. These are our catalysts. Chosen or random, 
But these are the catalysts. This is what we can work with. And the more aware and awake we are to that, the more the catalysts become chosen because we're choosing our path, we're choosing our growth, we're choosing our development. And then we create the catalysts. And in my perception, the more we do this, the less extreme they have to be, the less painful they have to be, because we are already open and um, in a receptive mode, allowing the divine to guide us, to live through us. And that way as well, we develop within ourselves and with, with um, interaction and in the outer, with the outer experiences, we actually develop a non-resistant attitude because all of a sudden there is no need to resist anything anymore because everything is for me. Everything is, is, has the potential to be of purpose for my growth, for my expansion, for my development, for me becoming more of who I am, which is the divine. So everything has the potential for me to join with God once more, more and more each day. So I can use any experience, anything in this life to merge more with the divine, with source energy and to become more and more it. Not by me as the ego, trying to be more holy, trying to be, um, to display all the attributes of what I think is divine. We cannot make our ego holy or perfect or spiritual. But what we can do is allow our spirit to live through us, to guide us, and that way your life will become transformed completely. And that way also, that is a path of every day, each day, more and more, living in alignment with your true self. Many people come to me and ask me, how can I live more in alignment of who I am? This is one way of how we can do this. But it's not possible if we hold on, like for dear life, um, to our old identity if we hold on to what we have believed to be up until now, if you are still or you have been up until now in the frame of mind that you're just this person, like then it's not possible. Then, then that's where you're at right now. But then maybe you will watch something like this in a year's time and you could be ready then to open your perception to the higher guidance, to your expanded version and essence of who you are. So I invite you to, many of you are doing this already, but to focus again with your intention on being the vessel and the conduit for higher power, presence, divinity to express itself through you that will solve your ego issues and that will also allow your life to come into true alignment with your purpose, with your essence, and with the divine will. I'm going to love you and leave you for today, and we'll talk again next time, if you want to.